I mean, I was brought up by a monk and a nun, a not very good monk and a nun, as you can, you can see by the fact that I'm here. <laughs> and I wholly believed, I wholly believed that the Roman Empire had been a terrible place and that Christianity had come and it had blessed it with goodness and the idea that is goodness. And if you look at the history, it just doesn't seem to be true. It's not as though the Romans were until they heard the Ten Commandments going around and planting swords in each other. It's, they might have been committing a bit more adultery, but there is almost no evidence to show that people were worse before Christianity or better after it. And in fact, I would say if you want to understand the danger of religion, and I see it as a genuine danger, as well as many good things. I mean, what you have to look at is not the writings of St. Augustine. The book you want to look at is the Theodosian Code. And that was the law, that was the collection of laws that was made at the end of the century in which Christianity took control. And for the most of it, what it did was it reinforced Roman laws. Yes, you measure grain with this. Yes, you sell your cows like that. You own your land if this happens. You can do this, that, and the other with your wife and chastise her in these ways. But the book that matters is the book that they put at the end. And they were the book, that was the book that dealt with the people who the church, were, who were the stated enemies, the bitter enemies of the church, and they were the Jews, the heretics, and the pagans. And it treated them in terms that were not just hostile, they were subhuman, they were demons, they were less than human, they were suffering from a sickness and they had to be cured, in inverted commas and we know how you cure heretics. So... <laughs> so I suppose every, everybody can guess. <laughs> no, I don't know, very, very, very well, and I appreciate, I appreciate your insights. Just that in any, in any developmental system, uh, when you focus on one stage, the other stage may appear to be contradicting what the previous stage has been, and that's, that's, that's about anything that develops. And the thing between the Old Testament and the New Testament, <clears throat> either you read something, you know, formulate the Old Testament, then gets changed in the New Testament, it's just an invitation for, for, for a system of belief that, that grows and that develops. There, there's a great deal in pre-institutional Christianity that is enormously respectful of pagan culture, pagan persons. Uh, the idea of, you know, the obligation one has to, to legal structures that were Roman at the time and so on. Very clear and sometimes problematic, but nevertheless very respectful of a sort of important knowledge of justice and so on that it, was present in the pagan world. And if you look at almost any classic theologian, uh, they quote Seneca and, uh, you know, they quote uh, important classical writers very freely, very respectfully. The, the, uh, the idea, I mean, obviously something very savage took place while the uh, institution of the church was forming itself as an institution. But there's nothing in the literature of Christianity that makes that either acceptable or necessary. You know, it's simply something that happened in the way things happen in history. It said that ancient Rome applied the word dignitas to military emperors and conquerors who returned victorious from battle. And their victory is supposed to have proven their dignitas, their worth, their dignity. And he took the same Christian writers who, according to you, destroyed everything in Rome or the pagan world to, to, to have turned this, you know. So Christian writers took this expression and instead of referring to this sense of victory and valor and all of that, turned it on, turned it on, its, head, you know, on its head and then said, it refers to the fact that every human being is created in the image and likeness of God. This is particularly uh, uh, important, I think, for some of us from our society where Christianity has intruded, not all, always in very positive, uh, ethical ways, uh, uh, intruded for the sole purpose, very often, of preparing the way, a kind of uh, avant-garde for the real stormtroopers of commerce, imperialism, colonialism, exploitation, uh, disdain, racial disdain, etc., etc. 
And the history of Christianity in our society, as you know, uh, has not been of the best, even till today. Mm -hmm. uh, one very important uh, example, culturally, when the Christians came, determined to spread the gospel, and they looked around, they couldn't find, they needed the devil. I liked, later on, I'd like to talk about my experience with the devil, by the way. Uh, I think three encounters, vicariously, but very interesting. <laughs> but I don't want to, uh, I, I don't want to uh, change the subject. When they came, they couldn't find the equivalent of the devil, of Satan. And so they took one of the deities, Yoruba deities, Ishu, who happens to be a trickster, you know, very complex, but I call Ishu the master dialectician, dialectician. And they took, because he's unpredictable, and he, he can upset the best laid plans, you know, mice and men. And they took Ishu and decided that is the devil. And they distorted the entire ethical structure that was based on the Yoruba pantheon, the various deities or various departments of existence, phenomena, conduct, relationship, on which a whole you know, functioning ethical structure had been built. Mm. And so when we're talking about rebuilding, creatively rebuilding uh, the uh, sense of you know, ethical conduct among uh, communities, I think we may have to go all the way back to what Christianity did to us on the African continent. That's, a, that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> now, because you know, I just happen to come from who are two countries west of Nigeria, so I'm from Ghana, uh, and so probably can talk also about the experience of uh, Christianity in Ghana. Uh, certainly, certainly, the arrival of uh, early Christians from Europe in Ghana uh, was kind of ambivalent or ambiguous in its, in its character. Uh, some came as pure missionaries, just to talk about the gospel. Some also came as chaplains of, uh, of, uh, of the colo you know, colonizing power, and, and so you have both of them. Those who came as chaplains you know, give the impression that they were related with colonization, implantation of other cultures and all. But there are also some who came just you know, for religious, religious purposes.